I'm Todd Price, dining writer for the Times-Picayune, and this is The Real Deal. We're at Cure today on Ferret Street, and we're gonna show you how to make a Sazerac right. We're gonna go inside and give you some tips on how to size up a bar, and we are going to convince you not to fear vermouth. Hi there. Hey. Welcome. Thank you. So here's my first tip. It's kind of a small thing, but if I walk in and they hand me a glass of water, that's a good sign. I think it's a signal they take service seriously. They're not just gonna sling drinks at you. Over here, you have all your bitters and droppers. You've got atomizers to spray. A lot of great bars don't take that step, but why is that a sign that you guys take what you're doing really seriously? Well, first of all, by putting bitters into droppers, you're able to control the amount of bitter. So we want consistency in dashing consistency and bittery. So what else did you look for when you're in a bar? This right here is an excellent sign. There is fruit out on the counter. That means they're using fresh twists of citrus on their drink. You have to be using top quality product. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really shines the most in cocktails are gonna be your citrus elements. Why have so many people had terrible tasting vermouth? because bar owners and restaurants have been serving bad vermouth for years. If you see a bottle of vermouth with a speed pour in it, don't order it. If you see a bottle of vermouth on the back bar that's open, don't order it. It has to be in a fridge. With a red, I think you can get two weeks, three weeks. Mm -hmm. If it's a white vermouth, you can get a week, you know, maybe two weeks at the house. We, we really do recommend for the house that you buy the small bottles. What is your preferred ratio for a martini? How much gin, how much vermouth, what do you like? I tend to go equal parts, that's yeah. My, that's, that's my really standard my is two parts gin, one part vermouth. And what kind of bitters do you want? I want orange bitters, just a few drops. Yeah. You know, if you have it at the home, a small dash. Do you put an olive in? No. Do you put olive juice in? No, nah, I do not personally. <laughs> what do you put in? How do you garnish I, it? I, I, I put a lemon twist on it. Yeah. Don't use the pith, don't use the white part, use, use the yellow part. And it has tons of oil, you push the oil out. Do you shake a martini? James I, Bond says you do. I do not shake a martini, <laughs> but I will if someone asks me to. The official cocktail of New Orleans. A whiskey cocktail would be whiskey, sugar, bitters, peel. What makes a Sazerac different from an old fashioned is that it uses uh, Herb Saint. A Sazerac is specifically rye whiskey. What makes it different is that it has proprietary bitters, which are Peychaud's bitters. Uh, and then the other aromatic is lemon peel. I know some people like Dale DeGroff do half rye, half cognac. So yes. we'll, we'll allow that. Yes. What will we not allow? Bourbon, bourbon's we, not good. We will not allow bourbon. Why, why is bourbon not gonna do it? Bourbon's not gonna do it because it doesn't have the spice that rye has. Right. It is a much sweeter product. Yeah. And the cocktail is not the same. So why do we care about the Sazerac in New Orleans? We talk about it a lot. We know that this particular style of whiskey cocktail was not only made consistently here, it's that it's been preserved. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the things that makes New Orleanians New Orleanians is that we preserve our, our, our culture. 